Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. And welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and evil scientist, DT from WeatherRisk.com, the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about weather, which is the best thing in the world to talk about. And this week we'll talk about, of course, Jose, which is going to be a miss. But then Jose may come back again a little bit here, so, you know... No way, Jose, but maybe. Uh, I've got a very interesting setup here with Jose coming up. Uh, the massive western uh, U.S. trough is going to set up, and uh, as it develops over the next several days, that's going to set up a massive ridge over the eastern U.S., which is going to bring late-season summer temperatures, but also has major implications for what's going to happen with Maria and Jose. Hurricane Maria, probably going to be a Cat 3, 4, 5, and yes, it is a threat, a threat, not a pos, not a certainty, a threat, that is to say a risk to the southeast U.S., the middle Atlantic coast. And of course, we'll talk about Fujiwara, which is one of the best things you can talk about next to Godzilla. All right, here's the uh, afternoon report from uh, Jose, um, and you can see the pressure is 970 there, maybe a little strong on the, on the evening uh, recon. I have not seen the evening recon yet. Still looking very nice, and you can see the uh, winds here from uh, Levi's uh, Tropical Tidbits. And you can see the winds were gusting up to, uh, you look at the uh, blue line here. In case you don't know how to read this, let me just show you how this works here. You can see the uh, blue line. This is a flight level wind here, right? So the uh, max wind up here and then up here around 80 knots. So there you go. And the, the other information, the pressure, the flight level temperatures, and so on and so forth. So uh, some people are having trouble learning how to read that, but uh, it's not that hard. And then uh, this is the uh, uh, 11 a.m. advisory. Again, you can see the hook to the right, very clear turn to the right. Uh, so that's what I said earlier yesterday, right turn Clyde. Um, and then, of course, as it crosses the uh, Gulf Stream, which is approximately, you know, running here, okay, it moves in the cold water, you know, the cold current coming on this way, so it loses its tropical characteristics and becomes subtropical storm and turns in that direction. Now, the uh, 5 o'clock advisory is doing the same sort of thing, even a sharper hook, as you can see. And, of course, they have tropical storm watches on the coast uh, just for some winds. I, it's a precaution. I would doubt that anybody in New Jersey, New York, or western Long Island is going to see tropical storm force winds sustained, maybe some gusts. Better chance of that at Cape Cod and uh, Martha's Vineyard, uh, Nantucket, places like that. All right, now here's the upper air pattern as of uh, this uh, Sunday afternoon here. And um, you can see there's uh, Jose, the uh, dot, the circle there off the uh, coast. Let me draw it in so you can see it right there. And here's our big upper low right there. There's the first trough, and here comes Big Bertha and the Butt Sisters right in here. And that's going to come down here and set up a massive trough, which is going to really fundamentally alter the pattern. Now, this explains why Jose is going to be kicked to the east and not going to slam into southeast of New England. There's a couple of Facebook pages out there from some weather weenie idiots who continue to hype and go through hysteria that Jose is coming to New York City or Jose is coming to Boston. Just ignore that. They don't know what they're talking about, and they're just trying to score some points and some Facebook likes. It's bullshit, and it's not going to happen. Now, let me explain to you why. Oh, I'll go back here a little bit. Um, this is a major piece of energy here in the short wave right here. All right, and both the GFS and the European models have it, and that's going to turn Jose to this direction. In addition to that, you've got this massive trough coming in rapidly in this direction, so everything is being shoved here, and that's why it's going to turn sharply to the right. And this is the uh, European valid as of 48 hours, so this is Tuesday morning, and again, we can see the strong piece of energy here, right here. Okay, and there's uh, Jose 968, which is a uh, strong Category 2 hurricane on the European. Parallel on the coast, there's New York City, you know, here's uh, Philly, and there's uh, D.C., and there's Richmond, and here's Hatteras. So it's going to do this and hook out to the right, because this piece of energy is going to drive it to the right. So there's no doubt about that. Here enough, the Jose hurricane model, and you can see the sharp turn to the right. I mean, what more do you need, folks? It's not going to hit New York City. It's not going to hit Boston. It just ain't. Now, notice again, many of the hurricane models are showing this, you know, track here, you know, to the south. They are turning it south like this, and that's that's going to be interesting development to see if it actually does that. This is the 18Z hurricane models, and again, notice how many of these hurricane models turn Jose south and then south southwest a little bit here, and that's going to cause a very interesting scenario developing later on. So, uh, just can't wait to see how this develops. All right, now, here are the European ensembles, and again, of the 51 ensembles, I think I see three of them, one, two, three, four, maybe four or five of them would show any sort of landfall. So, uh, 
again not coming to the coast okay and sure enough the hurricane intensity weakens but notice that even by 120 hours many of the models are still keeping a uh, jose you know decent uh, tropical storm here nothing too extreme but it's still got some kick to it it's not completely dead and of course as it comes southward again it might actually you know cross it near that gulf stream current so that's another complication all right here's the 72 hour european uh, valid as of Wednesday morning. Here, there's Jose, 974, Category 1 hurricane, uh, moving towards uh, the southeast of New England, and then it's about to make its turn. Here comes the ridge, pushing it upward, and that's going to drive it eastward. That's why the whole thing's going to turn east, as you can see. And let's look at the uh, next one. This is the European 84 hours upper air map. There's Jose near Cape Cod. Let me get my marker here. See right there. Okay. Look at the monster trough coming in here. Look at this baby. Woo! And that's forcing the ridge to expand, and that's driving um jose off the coast sharply to the east now there it goes in 96 hours right turn clyde there it goes and notice this big ridge developing right here over the midwest that's beginning to build in here and that's going to get more impressive as we go further out in time this is the gfs at 96 hours same sort of thing gfs kicking it out to the right because of that big ridge you see the orange area uh right here the big ridge right in this area here is forcing everything to the shift, shift to the right so the models are in excellent agreement through 96 hours here's the european 120 hours now what's happened here is that the uh, jose has done a little dipsy doodle as you can see this way here's the gulf stream current again so um but now the monster ridge look at this monster ridge sitting up in here wow this thing is is very powerful for mid-september and that's going to uh, protect the East Coast. So Jose is not going to be able to re-approach the East Coast again because of this enormous ridge. So even though you may want to forecast that Jose might want to do this, this ridge is blocking it. So very interesting setup to see what's going to happen here. Now, here's the long wave pattern. Uh, again, the whole country, you can see this enormous trough over the West Coast and the enormous ridge here over the Midwest. Now that, of course, remember, these two things are in a symbiotic relationship because this feature is big this feature is big it's just that simple it's a symbiotic relationship for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction monster trough over the west coast in the rockies big ridge over the midwest into new england now at 196 hours again there was the gfs we saw that um and then this is 120 hours the european this is the eps the european ensemble matches the operational run very closely that enormous a dome uh, or yeah, strong ridge over the Midwest, the Ohio Valley into New England, and then the big, huge trough over the West Coast covering California, the Rockies, Montana, Western Canada. A lot of rain. Now, it, for those of us who follow this stuff, you know, they've had a pretty big drought up in this area all summer long in South Central Canada and the Dakotas. But you're going to get a lot of rain, a lot of storms coming up here the next 7 to 14 days in this sort of pattern. All right. Now, here's Marie. Maria, I should say. Uh, and I just met a hurricane named Marie. Uh, anyway, uh, it is a hurricane now. Uh, the recon was barely. All right, the kind of, I thought earlier today they kind of jumped a gun on it, but it is a hurricane now at five o'clock, no doubt about it. And as you can see, it goes over Puerto Rico. Okay, it actually kind of misses um, the Antigua a little bit. Antigua will be on the uh, north side of it, so Antigua may take a bigger hit this time than it did from Irma. Uh, because it's passing south of it. Then it goes over Puerto Rico. Doesn't look like Puerto Rico is going to miss this one. And then it stays on the north side of the big island of Hispaniola and approaches the Bahamas. Uh, there's the recon you, earlier today. Uh, this is as of uh, 20 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. You can see 984 millibars, lowest pressure. And again, um, the data from the recon, you can clearly see a flight level winds right here around 65 knots. So that it, well, it definitely was a hurricane. And the pressure, there's the red line here, the pressure down here. So you can see 985, so that definitely is close enough. That's that's hurricane intensity. So it is a Category 1 hurricane, no doubt about it. Now look at the intensity. All the models, many of the hurricane models, bring it up into Category 3, some of them Category 4, hurricane intensity, over the next five days. I think that's probably correct. I don't see any reason to go against that. Now, here's Maria. It goes over, uh, you know, the Leeward Islands there, knocks the shit out of uh, Antigua, my old little stomping grounds there, then goes over downtown Puerto Rico and then passes to the north of Hispaniola. And notice the hook to the turn to the north here. Now, part of the problem is that all these models are run off the GFS grid. And the GFS, as you know, has a poleward bias. 
you know, likes to take things north early. So I don't know if it's going to hook this far to the northwest. If this may be, may, they may be more over here at 120 hours, 168 hours than, than, than what the model data is showing because these are all off the GFS models. So that may be a little too far to the northwest too soon. But it's the general idea. Now here's the GFS track, some 12Z. Um, I did not see the 18Z ensemble before I started this. I probably should have looked at it, but tough cookies. Anyway, as you can see, uh, the ensemble mean takes it up and then hooks it. Again, you see, remember I just told you how the GFS has a poleward bias, okay? A poleward, north poleward bias. That's why the GFS, remember the GFS kept taking Irma up the coast, Irma up the coast, and all these weather weenies and idiots kept saying it was coming up the coast. Look at here. Here's the mean track and curves it out to sea. The GFS has a poleward bias, and that bias affects many of the hurricane models beyond 120 hours. So you have to keep that in mind. This is probably wrong. All right, let's take a look at it, why it's wrong. Here's the European operational at 192 hours. Now what's happened is there's Maria, a nice strong Category 3 hurricane, 949 millibars, uh, moving through the Bahamas. And um, as you can see now, <clears throat> this is the remains of Jose, which might be here, might be a little weak system. But what's happened is the enormous Bermuda Ridge has moved in like this. All right. And that clearly, if this is the case, okay, that's not going to happen. So that's one of the reasons why. It's a pretty impressive looking uh, map. So in any event, uh, uh, this is 216 hours on the European, as you can see. And uh, it brings it very close to this morning. This is from this morning, uh, Sunday morning. You can see, again, the enormous ridge here. Um, over the Bermuda High, it's actually the Western Atlantic Ridge. And this ridge exists because of the deep trough here over the Western United States. And you can see 944 is headed right for Wilmington. And then sure enough, uh, boom, smash, direct hit Wilmington, and then into the Carolinas and Virginia at 240 hours on September 27th. Now, that was this morning, all right? Now, here's the afternoon ensembles, uh, the European ensembles. Notice that many of them are uh, taking it uh, up the coast, a few out to sea, but not many of them. That's because the European sees the big ridge here, and many of them take you toward in this direction. Maybe northern Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, what have you. That's the European ensemble. Now, here is the GFS. Sure enough, you remember we talked about the polewood bias? There it is. And you can see it. Oops. Clearly this direction. Loves to take things to the north. So, again, keep that in mind. Then here is the European ensemble. Uh, this farm this afternoon. There's the 12Z run. Here is our enormous trough and there's our ridge and and maria there's another ridge blocking it ha, cannot go out to sea in this in this pattern now what happens is maria may builds the ridge builds in this way and that forces maria possibly to turn into the coast so that's that's what i'm concerned about now let's talk about the fujiwara a fujiwara effect that's going to be big talk uh in the weather business here for the next week or so and what this is is when you have two areas of large intense low pressure Usually one is stronger than the other one. They rotate around each other. Sometimes it can be hurricanes. Sometimes it can be hurricane and ocean low, what have you. But that's what Fujiwara means. And um, this is a classic example of it. You've got uh, one intense hurricane here on the right and the other one not quite as strong. This is from the Pacific Ocean. There's, uh, and you can see the two systems very nicely. Uh, and they rotate around each other. Um, and this is why. Uh, without getting too technical here for you all, uh, you can clearly see that uh, you've got two systems here and there's some sort of a break point in between which determines where they're going to rotate around. So um, usually it's about 800, 900 miles within the, they rotate around each other. And some of the models are showing that here as we go into the afternoon runs. Now this was the afternoon uh, European at 144 hours. Uh, again, notice what's happened here. Uh, it now has Jose staying alive and dropping southward. Early this morning it did not have that. So that's a change. And what happens is now you have a distance here. Here comes Maria. But the big ridge is sitting like this. And there's the other part of the ridge here. So uh, that complicates things. So is how is Jose going to affect Marie? That's, that's an, a possible question to know, but fascinating to find out. This is day six, 144 hours. You can see the huge trough over the western United States, the enormous ridge over the Midwest and New England. And here comes Marie. Now at 144 hours at the surface on the GFS, same sort of thing. Now the GFS has Jose a little further to the east, but look at the enormous ridge here. Okay, so Jose is being forced in this way. Here comes Maria that way. Yeah, you're going to have a Fujiwara in here somewhere, boys and girls, if that's right. 
And sure enough, on the European 168 hours, here comes uh, Jose. It becomes a very weak system. It dies off because this takes all the energy, 938 millibars. As you can see, Maria, now category four. This becomes much weaker. But look at the enormous ridge here. Okay, this is a dangerous sign. This is going to force Maria into the U.S. coast if that ridge is correct. And this is the European 180 hours. Look at the ridge. How could it not do this? Now, we're assuming that this is correct. We are assuming this is correct. This is assuming. Okay, assuming. It might not be. So we don't know that for a fact, but it's a real probability. This is the European now 192 hours. Now, what happens is that the European and the, the operationally European at the last second uh, wants to weaken the ridge a little bit. Let me get my marker here. A little bit here. So it maybe maybe turns this direction, parallels the coast. Maybe. Uh, but that's the operational run. You want to use the ensembles here more than that. Here's a GFS ensemble, the uh, mean showing the hurricane approaching the southeast coast. The ensembles on the GFS, many of them are near the southeast coast or on the coast. And uh, finally, by 300 hours out, uh, we have a massive trough that moves into the Midwest on the East Coast, and it's autumn. Yay! We like autumn. Big trough coming in. All right, so in summary, this is an extremely complicated but fascinating synoptic setup with many factors in play here. The, uh, the biggest factor is the trough on the West Coast and how it develops that ridge over the Midwest and New England. That's a big factor. Key point number one, does Jose slide up to sea or does it turn southeast? I don't know. Right now, the data seems to favor that it's going to drop to the southeast again, but it might not. Point number three, Maria goes boom, becomes a big category three or four, maybe even a five hurricane. Key point, does it pass north of Hispaniola into the southeast Bahamas? Right now, it looks like it's going to do that. Point number four, Maria turns north, then what? Do we have a Fujiwara square dance with Jose and Maria? Does that save the U.S. East Coast from being hit from Maria? Don't know. Um, do we, does the Western Atlantic Ridge, all the Bermuda High, that, the war, that's what it stands for, Western Atlantic Ridge, Bermuda High, does that force Maria into the southeast U.S. of the Mid-Atlantic Coast? That threat is much higher if Jose dies or falls apart and does not become a big factor. Very interesting situation. I just cannot wait to forecast the hell out of this for the next uh, week or so. So, you know, when in doubt, signs the hell out of something. This is Meteorologist DT. I'll catch you soon.